I swear to God. How is the fish in there? I'm not sure where she went though. Welcome back to Callum Fishing. Um, over the last few weeks, I've been doing a fair bit of river trout fishing at one of my local rivers. And I thought um, I was fishing in a lot of different um, environments, so shallow water, deep water, murky water, clouds, sun. I thought I might as well just make a tips and tricks video about tips that I use that help me get trout. So if you're a beginner looking to get into trout fishing or you need a bit more knowledge on how to catch trout in rivers, stick around and um, I'll share some tips. Um, the gear I use in this video, will I'll just put in the link below. So uh, yeah, lures, line, reels, rods, that's all in the link below. Go and check it out if you want to see it. But uh, apart from that, sit back, relax and enjoy. The first tip I want to talk about is uh, wind versus no wind. Now, as pleasant as glassed out days are, especially for something like surface fishing for brim or if you're out in the boat in the ocean, I usually find for trout, a little bit of wind actually helps. It, um, it allows the fish to just lower their guard. They're not as flighty or finicky and it helps mask things like talking. So if you're fishing with a mate or if, you, if you're crashing through bush or walking, any sort of noise or something we make as we're fishing, it just masks that a little bit and allows us to have that upper hand on the trout. Um, obviously fishing in gale force winds isn't the best idea. Um, casting will be pretty atrocious and you won't have the best time. But the type of wind where there's a little ripple on the water, that's exactly what you want. I usually find it helps great. The fish will, yeah, the fish aren't as flighty, really. Fishing on glass out days though, like it can work just as well. Although the fish are a little bit harder to catch, they hear they hear a bit more. They're easier. They can see you easier. There's no ripple in the water. So yeah, fishing on glass out days is still quite possible to catch trout, but it may just be that little bit harder. That's why yeah, a little bit of wind goes a long way. Obviously though, if you are fishing against the wind, I'd be using heavier lures just to get that distance so you're not casting only a few meters in front of you. However, if you have the luck of casting with the wind, that can be another great advantage. You can be casting very long distances with light lures and yeah, that's probably another benefit of fishing with a little bit of wind is that if you're with it, you can cast light lures a very long way. So yeah, just a little bit of wind always helps. Is that a fish? Oh, yeah, that's a fish. Oh, jolly. What? No way. What? What just happened? What? 
That was a fish. <laughs> that was a fish. Jesus. All right. There we are, guys. Oop. That is just measured it then. That's 46 centimeters of pure wild brown trout. So I'm going to take a few pictures and get him back. Look at that fish. Starting to get a bit of a hook jaw on it. Tails the male, so yeah. All right, on the topic of water clarity, it's uh, quite simple. Um, on days where the water's really murky and muddy and looks basically like chocolate milk, I'd be using things like bright colored lures. So reds, pinks, oranges, stuff that's really gonna grab their attention. Also use lures with rattle, so it's gonna make a heap of commotion in the water. That way the trout, even with limited visibility, is gonna have the best chance possible at spotting that lure. You can also use heavier line on murky days because it's pretty simple. The trout aren't gonna be able to see it as well. So if you're fishing in an area with a lot of structure and you, you would prefer to use a heavier line, go for it um, in the basis of trout on a day in murky water i could you could go up to something like eight pound or ten pound liter so yeah it doesn't really matter with line on a murky day but i'd definitely be using things like bright rattle lures to get their attention because they're not really going to be as focused on finding really subtle things you're going to be fishing for that reaction bite um on clear days it's everything but flipped around Everything's the same, but it's flipped around. So really light line. Um, so say four pound up to six pound. I wouldn't be going past six pound. If it's really clear, like gin clear water, I would probably go down to four, but you could probably get away six. It depends where you're fishing on structure and everything else. Um, lures wise, like I said, it's everything flipped around. So this time you want to be using really clear subtle bait fish representations or if you're fishing with plastics or something you could go something like a little creature bait that looks like a cricket or something as long as it's subtle and it basically matches the hatch in terms of what they're eating in the wild so they'd be eating galaxia minnow bugs little snails um flies on the water stuff like that that yeah as long as it's subtle and it matches what they're eating in real life and doesn't make a whole load of commotion even the even the most finicky trout are probably going to have a crack at it in even the most clear water so yeah basic basic rule of thumb summarized murky days bright colors rattling lures line doesn't matter as much clear days clear lures light line line definitely does matter so yeah that's water clarity Hello. God, I love flies, you know. Be out fishing, it's a lovely day, beautiful view, catching fish, nice breeze coming through, and then just right in your ear or in your nose or in your mouth, you buzz, 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 just sucking up any bit of moisture they can find. And it's really relaxing, really relaxing. You know, you're taking in the view and the scenery and you've got and then occasionally one goes too far and goes down your neck and there's So they, re they really turn a nice occasion into an even better one. You know, when you've got a few, few dozen small insects crawling to get at any mucus or pore on your body. It's great, I love flies, I absolutely love them. See, this is where a bait cast would be great. And that's how I'm going to get one. Oh! Oh, yes! Oh. Yep. 
always one in there, isn't there? All right, there's another one. Look at that, big brown trout. Came right out from a spot that I've got quite a few now from. So um, it goes to show that rapids, shade and deep water produce big trout like that. Look at the colors on it. Yes. All right. Gonna get this guy, get a, get a few photos and get this guy back. All right, so the last tip slash trick I wanna talk about, and that is probably the most important one, is where to find trout. Um, unless you're fishing a big, vast, open dam or a canal, the trout just aren't gonna be sitting out in the middle of nowhere in the open. Um, they're gonna be in structure or rapids or even under banks. So in this, in this tip, I'm gonna tell you about the three and just simplify them and yeah, just give you an understanding of them. So the first one is structure. Now that can be anything from weed on the water. So weed beds on the water, um, leaves, grass on the water, all the way down to things like sticks, submerged logs, trees under the water. Basically anything that you think a trout can hide under or just take cover under. Um, sticks and stuff especially. And the reason why trout love this is because it's shelter. It's shelter from predators and they can also get a fair bit of food off there. But I would always be casting and looking for in, in a river when you're fishing for trout, I'd always be looking for structure and just cast alongside it or next to it. And a lot of the time you'll see a trout dart out and grab your lure rather than just casting out into the middle of nowhere. So yeah, always look for structure. The second one is rapids. Now, I cannot stress enough, especially in a river with not a lot of flow, if you find a section with rapids, there's probably gonna be a trout in there. Um, how you fish it though is pretty important. You, you're not gonna catch a lot if you just cast straight into the middle of the flowing rapids. And yeah, what you wanna be doing is if there's boulders in the, in the, in the rapids itself, cast adjacent to the boulders because a lot of the time trout aren't going to waste all their energy just trying to keep up in the rapids they'll be sitting behind a boulder and that way food flows down to them if there aren't any boulders obviously in the rapids cast at the the top or the bottom of the rapids that way the trout will have all the food coming down to them at the bottom or at the top they'll have start stuff start to flow in so yeah basically don't rapids are great but don't cast right into the middle of them be smart about how you fish them but definitely I would be seeking out rapids if you're fishing in, if you're fishing a river with not a lot of flow or just the trout river at all. Rapids are great. And the last tip I want to talk about often gets ignored quite a lot and which is, which is uh, bad because a lot of the time fish are right there and that's undercut banks. Now, a lot of the time you'll be fishing and you'll think, oh, it's deep out there. I'll just bang a cast out there because there has to be a fish. It's deep, it's dark, there's got to be something in there. There's a lot of the time, the trout will be right at your feet at the bank. Now, a lot of banks, especially where I'm fishing around Victoria and stuff, have, are quite undercut. So you'll see the grass, but the, there will often be a pocket where fish can hide and trout take full advantage of that. They love that. You can quite often just go quite a few hundred meters without even thinking about that which you should be because a lot of the time trout will go under there for shade on a sunny day or to hide from predators or even just have a rest. And I've probably caught a four to, oh, I, forget, I forget how big it really was, but it was around a four to five pound trout just from casting right close to the bank. And that's the way to fish undercut banks. You, you gotta be quiet obviously, but just cast along right next to the bank. And a lot of the time there will be trout dart out and grab the lure where you just would not think there would be one. So summarized, the three places to find trout are structure in the water, rapids, but make sure you fish in the rapids either next to a rock in the rapids or at the base and the top, not just right in it. And obviously undercut banks because like I said, a lot of the time you wouldn't think there would be trout under there, but trout do love to sit under those undercut banks. So yeah, that's where to find trout. Every, every time I use this big tripod for filming, it um, makes me feel like that uh, like that uh, big bloke from Predator with the moustache and the cowboy hat. Like, You're hit! You're bleeding bad, man! I ain't got time to bleed. Is it just me, or...?
Gee, that's one very hot sheep. Bah, bah. Bah, bah, little hot sheep. Hit, got it. There we are. Oh, he's not a bad one, actually. Oh, yeah, not bad. Jesus, cranking minnows are good. Oh, my God. Is that recording? Oh, you beauty, that is. All right, how am I going to bring this one up? I'm just going to lift it. There we go. There we are. All right, there we are. That's the second brownie of the day. Crank a minnow, holding up well. Gonna get him back. All right, guys, so that's it. Hope you gained some tips and tricks and enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Um, and just let me know what you think. Um, this is the first time I've done sort of like a tips, tricks, slash vlog type video so yeah let me know what you think in the comments and uh i'll see you in the next one